hi children and hi everyone in previous video i explained about the how the light rays will behave when they are incident on the curved surfaces curved surfaces so children we are discussing the chapter what is refraction of light at curved surfaces this is the third i think so third video regarding the theory, theory classes part 3 and today our topic is behavior of light rays when they are incident on a lens behavior of light rays when they are incident on lenses let's go for topic before going to going to the topic my small request is there you must watch the video without skipping if you can skip the video you don't understand anything so you must watch the video without any skipping and after watching the class you must like share and comment the video and your for latest notification subscribe my channel so i am going to topic now children here behavior of the light rays when they are incident on a lens in previous class and previous video i explained that what's that how we can take f1 c1 for f1 c1 and f2 c2 for convex lenses and concave lenses and how we can show the convex lens in diagrams and concave lens in diagrams so here i already told you this is the double headed arrow represents the don't forget this is double convex lens double convex lens you must remind this and after that this is the we are having some like slits this is what concave lens don't forget children so if you can understand this topic if you can understand today's topic then only you will go for next important topic draw the ray diagrams to draw the ray diagrams today's class is very 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 important that's why you must watch it so first thing is what how we can identify the convex lens and concave lens in diagrams the double headed arrows double headed arrows should be taken as the biconvex lens and slits are we a vertical line with the two slits that should be taken as here by concave or concave lens clear and you have to remind one more important point what's that for convex lens on first side we have this side we have f1 c1 and this is a f2 and c2 i already told you for lens we have two focal points and now for by concave on the first side only we have f1 and c1 and this side we have f2 and c2 clear that is the difference you have to identify so this is for convex lens for convex lens from the middle of the lens right side we have f1 c1 and left side f2 c2 and in case of concave on right side f2 c2 left side f1 c1 clear in previous video i explained you must, must watch for it why the convex lens is called converging lens why it should be taken as diverging convex is converging and concave is diverging lens so if you can if you want to understand that just go previous video and check it once clear so now i am going to the topic now in this way we can identify the concave and convex in diagrams and identification of f1 c1 f2 c2 for both cases same thing so here the first thing is i am going to explain if the ray is ray is along the principal axis along the principal axis the first thing is what if the ray is moving along the principal axis principal axis that the first rule here if the ray is i am showing now this is the ray and just observe here so if the ray is moving along the principal axis then there is no deviation in both cases this is the first one clear 
when again same in case of ray diagrams i explained on that time here also same thing when the ray is moving along the principal axis just simply on the principal axis then there is no deviation for it that the first one clear the ray which is moving along the yes same principal axis there is no deviation for it clear and now here second one if the ray is passes through the optic center passes through the optic center optic center then also there is no deviation so this is the second diagram second rule the light ray is moving through the optic center this is the lens biconvex lens and it is center generally for mirror what we call pole in case of mirrors the midpoint what we call pole but in this case lenses what you have to say s that should be optic center what do you say optic center i already told you well we are taking some this is the biconvex lens now this is the optic axis optic axis and this is the principal axis where they can meet they will be intersect that point is here what it is nothing but optic center what say optic center clear when the light is moving through the optic center then the refracted ray is undeviated undeviated here also same thing there is no deviation clear this is about the second rule clear children when the light ray is moving through the optic center then here there is no deviation for the refracted ray these two are the first you have to remind first rule is what when the ray is passing along the principal axis and optic center there is no deviation for light rays clear and now we have third one is there let us see third one if the light rays are parallel to the principal axis light rays are parallel to the principal axis let us see what will be happen so this is what this is what principal axis and this is what by convex lens what is that by convex lens so light is coming from where parallel beam of light means what parallel beam of light means the light is coming from long distances so here for convex lens on this side what do you have f1 c1 and this is f2 and this is c2 when the light is parallel to the principal these light rays how, how they are parallel to the principal this is the principal axis this is the principal axis what i am drawing now this is the principal axis for that these rays are in parallel so after refraction they should meet at one point that point is called here focal point what we call focal point so from that what you have to say if the light rays are parallel to the principal axis after refraction they should meet at one point that point what we call focal point so this is the reason why the biconvex is called converging lens why it is called converging lens so here we are showing that parallel beam of light parallel beam of light while the light is coming from far distances or infinite distances then we can known or we can say that the parallel beam of light when the parallel beam of light is incident on the biconvex lens after refraction they should be meet at one point that point what we call focal point now i am drawing the same thing for now here by concave lens by concave lens clear this is f1 and this is the c1 and this is the f2 and this is c2 light is coming from where 
as from long distance infinite distances so this is the parallel beam of incident rays parallel beam of incident rays so after that there should be as you have to observe the diagram carefully what do you observe so there should be deviates after refraction they are deviates so after that clear you have to observe the two diagrams very carefully here in both cases the condition is same what's that light is coming from long distance that is the parallel beam of light so here after that refraction i am extending the refracted rays back so now here they are meeting one point here what extending rays are meted one point from that point you can observe they are seems to be like diverse they are seems to be like diverse so here these are the extended clear if you take one more ray i am showing like this also yes i am taking here one more yes now you can understand the refracted rays are seems to be diverse from a point from that they are seems to be diverse clear diverge means what they are separating from one point diverges converge means into out like that in this case here the refracted rays are extended back they will meet on one point then what you have to say those refracted rays are seems to be is diverse so that's why it is called a diverging lens diverging lens so here this is the point is f1 clear children third is what if the light rays are parallel to the principal axis then what observe after refraction they are meet at what one focal point clear if the light rays are parallel to the principal axis then after refraction they should be meet at one focal point clear and next thing here fourth one if the parallel beam of light parallel beam of light can make some angle can make some angle with the principal axis with the principal axis for that we have to check again diagram what is the fourth one if the parallel beam of light can make some angle with the principal axis now in this case angle what is zero this is the parallel beam of light so in this case this is the principal axis and this is the incident ray then how they are both are parallel when they are parallel the angle is zero now we have some another case is what's that the beam of light will make some angle with the principal axis so for that we go for this one this is the important children for four marks also they will ask so i will draw it here for first one i am drawing here by convex lens again this is f1 c1 f2 and c2 here so this is the parallel beam of light some here i am showing this is angle this is the angle they will make some angle with the principal axis clear after refraction after refraction they should be at one point that should be in the focal plane the point at the focal plane so here focal plane means the plane which is perpendicular to the principal axis 
clear this is the principal axis and this is the plane how much angle is there 90 clear don't confuse children here this is the parallel beam of light again same thing what is that parallel beam of light means what it is coming from long distance coming from long distance so it is a parallel beam of light that will make some angle theta so all are parallel that's why they will make same angle with the principal axis almost all so then after that same thing in previous rule also after when the parallel beam of light is incident on the by convex lens they should be converge at one point converge at one point here also happening same thing here also they are converged at one point but in previous case the point on principal axis clear you have to observe very carefully in previous example what i told is simply this is the biconvex lens very important children don't confuse in diagrams now here this is the third rule what i explained previously just now after refraction they should be meet at one point that should be here focal point f1 clear but in this case after refraction they are meeting one point but it is not on principal axis not it is on principal axis that should be in focal plane that should be in focal plane clear so at this point we are drawing one plane clear that it is nothing but in focal plane that should be converges at one point that point is on focal plane focal plane of the converging lens so focal plane means what the plane that should be in perpendicular to the principal axis so now what is the rule if the parallel beam of light can make some angle with the principal axis after refraction they should be meet at one point in the focal plane in the focal plane again what is mean by focal plane the plane which is perpendicular to the principal axis is called focal plane clear so this is about the for converging lens if you can same thing i am taking here for biconvexive so here this is the biconcave principal axis principal axis clear again the light is coming so here clear so again it seems to what observe again this is the parallel beam of light parallel beam of light they will make some angle theta again they are seems to be diverse they are seems to be diverse so from the refracted rays from the refracted rays we are taking the again extending back extending back again they will meet at one point that point here now f1 c1 and f2 c2 we have to extend them back again they will meet at one point clear this is the extended back it is also extended back and this also extended back and this also extended back so they will meet at one point one point so from that point what you have to say they are seems to be diverse how they are they are seems to be diverse that means in case of a concave lens even though it is parallel beam of light or any kind of light after refraction the rays are diverges but in case of convex converges so in this case also again what you observe they are seems to be diverse the refracted rays are seems to be diverse at a point again where it is the point in focal plane where it is focal plane 
so this is the another rule so if you have idea about these four rules you can easily go for next drawing of ray diagrams very very important and easy to if you can understand this one you can easily draw the ray diagrams so children in this video we discussed about the four rules in this topic what is behavior of the light rays when they are incident on the lens the first thing is what if the ray is moving along the principal axis then there is no deviation these four rules are applicable for the both lenses it is for converging lens and concave lens these are applicable to the two lenses but diagrams are different ray diagrams are different but rules are same the first thing is what ray is moving along the principal axis then there is no deviation for the refracted ray and secondly if the ray is moving through the optical center then also there is no deviation undeviation and if the light rays are parallel to the principal axis after reflection they should meet at focal point so for the convex lens it seems to be like converging to the focal point for concave lens they should be diverges into the from the focal point and fourth one if the parallel beam of light makes some angle with the principal axis then in this case for convex lens the refracted rays must be meet in focal plane and there seems to be converse focal plane at a point in the focal plane for this also at a point in the focal plane from that point the light seems to be diverse so children i hope you you understand the topic if you can understand this topic like share and comment the video and for if you want more videos from me and if you want to enjoy the with physics then subscribe my channel then press the bell icon also so we will meet in the next video children with another topic bye take care